all right y'all what's going on it's combo breaker 99 i am back with another video okay y'all so uh you know i just got to get this one off my chest here man because i caught i caught a certain somebody's video uh talking about casey o'neill's analysis of manon's fear of manon Firo's performance over uh caitlin jacagan right so you know look i still rock with manon still ride with her you know i know she's kind of going through her own thing as far as deciding what to do but this is a different situation here. Um, we're just talking about the breakdown of her performance and what type of uh, what type of holes were in her game uh, based off of what uh, one Casey O'Neill saw, right? So Casey O'Neill, y'all know who I'm talking about, BJ from No Field to MMA, uh, played back the clip of Casey O'Neill saying that all she saw was side kick after side kick with Manon's chin out, and she feels like she could do better at the top of the division, right? Okay, so um, before I, well, I'm gonna address that, then I'm gonna address, you know, as far as uh, these two fighting and what's being exposed in Manon. Okay, for one, uh, I respect her opinion. You know, I definitely respect Casey O'Neill's opinion as an analysis because, yeah, I had my my uh, critiques I was making about her performance over Caitlin Chikagan, you know, as far as, um, you know, uh, looping some shots, making a few mistakes here and there, you know, leaving the chin open. Uh, that's one thing, right? You know, that's one thing if you look at it in that manner of speaking. Yeah, I can respect that because, hey, I think we all saw those openings. But when it came down to it, she won the fight. She clearly won the fight. And she got a win over a top, a top contender, you know, a number one contender, a veteran, right? So, like I said before, when it comes down to Manon Firo taking on Caitlin Chikagan, the fight was going to be 50-50, and it could have looked like that because she's dealing with somebody with such a high IQ, right? Now, you could be on the outside looking in for one Casey O'Neill from the outside looking in thinking, oh, you know, oh, this is all she could do, and I could do better. Well, you got to work your way up there. On top of that, a lot of people say that about Caitlin Chikagan until they get in there, right? Caitlin Chikagan's beat many a fighter off of her IQ and off of her volume. You know, so you got to give her plenty of credit on that. So you have to give plenty of credit to Manon Firo for what she was able to do by beating Caitlin Chikagan at her own game, strike for strike, right? Now, in my opinion, she shouldn't have taken that approach. She shouldn't have taken that striker versus striker approach. She should have went in and used her wrestling and, you know, made it more of a physical fight on Caitlin Chikagan. But when it comes down to it, she still beat her, you know, and I still think she does have the tools to beat Caitlin Chikagan in much more dominant fashion. She just went for the uh, IQ and strike for strike approach, and it worked. And, and it worked, right? So that part I respect, Casey O'Neill. Okay, you know, if you want to say that, that's fine. But as far as, you know, her fight being able to do better at the top, I mean, she's still got years to go. You know, she's still got a few years to go, she said. And I mean, if she's just basing it off what she saw out of Manon, I mean, you got to still look at the middle of the division. There's still a lot of work to do in between, you know? And, um, my response to BJ as far as, you know, just saying that uh, she actually Casey O'Neill didn't even say the word exposed. She just said she used the sidekick over and over. And to me, there's no problem with that. It's like a jab. You'll see fighters jab over and over and over. You know what I mean? Like they'll use the jab over. So she uses her sidekick over. That's like a range finder. And it's like a it's a point builder. It can be a damage maker. You know what I mean? So seeing the sidekick and how she throws it and she can time it you know, she can use that as her secondary jab. So I, I don't really see a problem with that. I mean, the chin thing, yeah, that's still an issue. But hey, Casey O'Neill, just because she got a good chin, you know, don't mean, um, you know, she should be taking punches all day, you know, so you still got to look at that. Her chin's wide open. Her defense is wide open. So before she can speak on Manon, she's still got a long way to go as well. You know, she's still got a lot of things to polish up because you're not going to beat Valentina with that type of defense. You're not going to beat Tyler Santos taking that many shots, right? So when you measure it in that fashion, these two are not on a collision course right now because Casey, Casey O'Neill still has that work in between. And like I said before, she she um, she got pushed to number 10 in a gift manner. You know, that's a gift. That was a gift, uh, a, a, a gift move up for her because Macy Barber was number 10. So just her being in the top 10, she didn't do anything to get into the top 10. She was still like number 12 or 11. By default, she got bumped up, right? By default, she would have got moved up just like anybody, you know, if somebody retires. But over the past week or two weeks ago, she actually just got moved up because they took Macy Barber out of the top 10 for whatever reason. So literally, she's still not a top 10 fighter. 
you know, she still has the she still has to prove herself to be a top 10 fighter. And that's no disrespect. I'm talking about the rankings when it comes down to that. So we're not going to just say, oh, because they pushed her up. She is on that level and she is on a collision course with Manon. No, like Manon right now is battling her own. You know, she's on her own level. Like you could say from the outside looking in, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I could do better than that. No, well, Manon's already up here fighting number one contender, you know, and now she's trying to decide whether to fight Alexa Grass or Valentina. So she's not even in the talks right now. Now, we that's a whole different story now, whether she should fight Grass or the champion. But Casey O'Neill is not even in that in that pool right now. She's got her own things to do. So when you sit from the outside looking in and say, oh, she got exposed, well, Let's look at how she let's look at how Casey O'Neill looked against Roxanne Matafari. You know, a fighter on her way out the door was able to land multiple shots, many a shots on somebody like Casey O'Neill. Right. Was she been able to do that to Manon? Probably not, because that's a different level. See, Manon is still on another level. And I think that's why a lot of people have more harsher criticism on her for not going for the Valentina fight, because she is on a much higher level than Casey O'Neill. She is considered ready for Valentina Shevchenko more so than Casey O'Neill. So Casey O'Neill is not even in talks to fight Manon. You know, let's, let's just shut that down right now. You know, she could be in talks to fight Andrea Lee now, maybe a Macy Barber at, at, at some point, uh, Jennifer Maya now when she makes her return. But, you know, Manon's already beat the number one contender. Um, that's where she's at. You could say you could see this and that, but if you're not on that level, it's not... It's not even relevant right now. It's not even relevant. And that's not to Casey because she still knows she got to put in the work. You know, this is to the Casey O'Neill fan out there. I'm just addressing it. So whatever she sees and whatever she sees doesn't mean she can expose it. We, we've heard that in the past. Fighters in boxing say, oh, I saw I see something in this fighter. Oh, I see something in this fighter. Wait, wait till I get there. You know, well, seeing seeing one thing, seeing it is one thing, but actually being able to expose it in the octagon or in the ring that's a totally different thing okay so yeah man um i gotta say i just want to come on and address that you know manone uh she's still a tough fighter uh there's some things yeah she needs to work out but the things that she's done and the accomplishments she's gotten have got her to this point you know what i mean so if you want to call it putting on a pedestal it, it's not that because it's not even overhyping because she's beating everybody on her way to the top that she was supposed to be you know she leveled up each time you know didn't knock everybody out but each time Manon moved up she won so it's nobody putting on the pedestal it's everybody just saying she's ready that again that's why everybody was a little uh critical and even still kind of upset she didn't just call out Valentina because they know she's on a higher level nobody's saying about nobody's saying Casey O'Neill looks like she's ready for Valentina at this point because styles make fights and I mean the way Manon is coming in beating people she's she's advancing each time you know, so you can say it's a sidekick over and over, or whatever. It got her there, right? Eventually, yeah, she's going to have to evolve for this championship fight. And just in general, if she ever has to fight somebody like Tyler Santos, but, you know, that's another story, you know, because Manon's up here now. Casey O'Neill is in the number 10 spot right now. And again, like I said, that's an undeserving 10 spot because they just snatched Macy Barber's 10 spot and just gave it to her. After what, eight months in that inactivity? How, how, how'd you get that top 10 spot? I'm just saying. Anybody want to argue with me on that? I mean, hey, it's in the rankings. It ain't got nothing to do with hating Casey O'Neill because I like her as a fighter. But as far as, you know, um, just fans thinking that she's prepared for this uh, uh, this task at hand, there's still a lot of work in between to do. And I still think Manon could beat Casey O'Neill right now. That's a totally different fighter than a Caitlin Chikagan. Hell, Caitlin Chikagan could beat uh, Casey O'Neill right now okay so you got to give these fighters credit where credit is due just because one fighter say something hey that don't mean that, that that don't mean that they can do it you know what I mean just because they say oh this they exposed here that don't mean they can do it they got a lot of work to do but um like I said if I got anything else to say on it or anybody got a response to me I'm right here I, I drop another one and we're gonna do this live stream uh later and maybe talk about it if I feel the need but let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Yeah, real quick final thoughts. Yeah, man, like, look, I'm I'm a little disappointed with Manon didn't take the fight, but I think um, she's just setting the standards for herself right now. Like, she she wants to make sure she's ready for that big fight. And if one more is what she wants, then one more, hey, let her get it. Um, yeah, that that that's her choice. I, I would love to see her go ahead and take the fight now. 
you know, but if that's what she wants to do, fine. Um, there is some things that she needs to work at on the level she's on, but if anybody else thinking that it's going to be easy task beating Manon just off of how she looked against the number one contender, hey, they, they in for a rude awakening. Combo Breaker 99, I'm out. Subscribe, peace. And by the way, I didn't hear anybody really calling for Manon or even really critiquing or criticizing Manon until after this fight now. Now it seems like somebody might be targeting Manon now that they think she tend to, tended to look exposed in a Kate Lynch and Kagan fight. So, you know, um, that's another thing to think about. It's always till you see a weakness in a fighter, then it's, uh-oh, I could take that fighter, right? Just think about that as well.